Good morning. My name is Ignacio Hernandez, and I am with the Consumer Federation of California. I'm their legislative advocate. Uh, we're here this morning to discuss SB 823, uh, which is authored by President Pro Tem Don Parada. The bill is currently on the assembly floor. Uh, it was up for a vote yesterday. It fell a few votes short, and will be uh, there will be a revote today. This bill addresses regulations of private post-secondary education institutions here in California, for-profit institutions that are directed to teach students and provide training for students and as, a, as we speak are currently not regulated in California because of a sunset of statutes and voluntary regulations. We now have schools operating in California without regulations and we have a long history of abuses and students being victimized by these institutions, uh, which is why this bill is so important and we need and call on the assembly uh, to pass this legislation today. I will now introduce some of our speakers. We are going to begin with Betsy Imholtz from the Consumers Union. Thank you. First, I wanted to thank uh, Speaker Bass and Senator Parada for their continuing work and leadership on this issue. Uh, it's a very important issue affecting nearly half a million students in California and we're not out of the woods yet on it. And we are in fact in a crisis situation in California. We have no oversight system for proprietary schools and no consumer protections for the nearly half million students that attend them. Students are obviously harmed by this situation. They invest tens of thousands of dollars. Some have called our office with $100,000 in debt from attendance and short-term programs. Um, investment in a system where there is no quality oversight at the moment. They have no place to complain to get their complaints investigated. They don't have basic information on which to make good uh, comparison shopping uh, decisions about which schools to go to. And if their school closes unexpectedly, which often happens unfortunately, they have no place to go to recoup their losses. Employers are also harmed by this absence of oversight. They need qualified employees who can come out of training programs with credentials able to take and pass licensing exams. Uh, they need a high quality training system and we can't assure that in California right now. Proprietary schools themselves as well are harmed by this situation um, because the good schools in California are gonna be tarnished by the reputation of the school as the Wild West, a totally unregulated atmosphere. California was previously, some 20 years ago, the diploma mill capital of the nation. Um, we we uh, had schools that did not provide education and took student money. Um, and in fact, they're starting to migrate back to California now. In the last two weeks, we've seen two, two schools, in fact, relocate. They were run out of business in the schools where they operated, and now they're back in California, one down in Los Angeles and one that's set up recently in Carmichael in the Sacramento area. So we are strongly supporting SB 823. We're urging the legislature to pass it. It would reinstitute a legal framework. Uh, it removes the private right of action that students had under prior law to bring uh, legal action in court for specific violations. However, students would still have a fraud and common law uh, cause of action to, re to get redressed through the courts for misrepresentations. Why does Consumers Union support it? Because it would set basic standards, require basic information for students so they could comparison shop, would give students a place to complain and have their complaints investigated without needing to go to a lawyer, and would reinstitute the Student Tuition Recovery Fund, which has been on the books for 20 years until it collapsed uh, in, uh, very recently. So policymakers, we're urging you to act quickly, decisively, pass SB 823 to protect students in California. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Elena Ackel from the Legal Aid of Los Angeles. My name is Elena Ackel. I'm here as a private citizen, but I've been a public interest lawyer uh, in Los Angeles and working on these issues for over 25 years. And I would also like to thank uh, Senator Parada and Speaker Bass for supporting this bill. This is an extremely modest bill. It only, it only contains a very small part of the prior law that expired, and we have the governor to thank for that. And we'll notice that most all the Republicans voted against this bill, even though it is exceedingly modest. 
And I see the people after they have been defrauded and misrepresented by the school. They come in because they've defaulted on their student loan. And then what happens is their life ends up being a downward spiral. Because when that happens, they can't get grants and loans to get a legitimate education. And they also, uh, their credit is ruined. They can't get Section 8 housing. And then their, their paycheck, modest though they may be, are garnished to pay back for these student loans for a training that they did not receive. And who's opposed to this bill is the major change because they want no regulation whatsoever. They want to be able to sign up students by misrepresenting that 80% of their students get jobs when in fact it's only a fraction of that amount. And the major opponents are the huge chains that publicly traded that owe a duty to their taxpayer, not to their students. And it's ITT, Corinthian, and Career Education Corporation. Corporation. Corinthian was sued by the Attorney General. It also was fined by the U.S. Department of Education. Career education was exposed on 60 Minutes uh, several years ago, and ITT has been a problem for a long time. Recently, there was an investigation that was dropped, uh, but it has been problematic, and we've received complaints about those schools for a long time. Now, what's in it that people would vote against it? All that is in there is disclosures. So if someone is going for a medical assistance court, they want to be disclosed to them the percentage of people that completed the course, the percentage that plays, and the percentage, if there's a license exam, the percentage that pass. So then the students can make a decision about what school to go to. Like, for example, if they want to be a licensed vocational nurse, obviously you would go to school that had a high passage rate. But if this bill isn't passed, those disclosures will not be made. They're not being made now. Students are being misled. A second important provision is the Student Tuition Recovery Fund, which protects students when the school closed down, they get their money back. One of the schools that closed in San Diego, MicroSkills, had 400 students. It didn't get federal financial aid. They were private loans. Some of them had interest up to 20 and 25 percent. The students are on the hook for that, and these schools kept enrolling people to the hour before they closed. And those, if this bill isn't going to, it doesn't pass, those students will not get relief. Another school that closed down was a helicopter school. The tuition was $70,000. Those students are out that money because they were not federally insured loans if this bill doesn't pass. Another provision that protected limited English speaking students, it prohibited them from being signed up for English language instruction unless they could have had an opportunity, unless they were going to understand the instruction. And the bill was in the old law and it was required because there was a host of, of non-English speaking people that were ripped off by being signed up for English language instruction. And the last one, the last important provision, as I said before, is only required that minimal disclosures be made about completion and placement and whether the units earned are transferred. And Los Angeles, where I am from, and I've been a public interest attorney, is there's a host of these problems. So I would urge that the, the assembly members from Southern California and in where I see the victims, Mr. Price, Mr. DeLeon, Mr. Fuentes, and most of all, uh, former Speaker Nunez, I think it's essential that for them to properly represent their district, they must vote yes on this bill. Thank you. Our next supporter is Ed Howard, representing the Center for Public Interest Law. Uh, good morning. Um, I also would like to lend my thanks to Senator Parada, Speaker Bass, and especially Senator Parada's excellent staff who have made the cause of these students uh, really their own cause. I want to talk a little bit about who these students are who are now left without protection uh, here in California. These are some of the most deserving people in our state. These are the people who believe in the American dream, who see a television ad during the day that lends them the hope that by taking a course at a particular school, 
they'll be able to carve out a better life for themselves and their family. That's the people who we're trying to protect in this bill. They are disproportionately of color, African American and Latino. They are disproportionately low income. And they are, as a consequence, disproportionately susceptible to having their lives ruined by taking out student loans that forever alter their finances on a false or inaccurate promise. And there aren't just a few of them. As you've heard, there are nearly half a million of these people right now, and who right now are living in a wild, wild west where it comes to ensuring the quality and integrity of the products that they are incurring life-altering debt to buy, namely the promise of a better life through education. Until SB 823 is enacted, and let's make no mistake about it, to fulfill our responsibility to these people of color and these low-income neighbors of ours in California, SB 823 must be enacted this year. Until we do that, until we do that, we will all be stained by the decisions that we make to let these people be subject to, let these people be subject to dishonesty and the promise of a better life. It doesn't always happen, but it happens frequently enough that they need the kinds of basic minimal protections afforded by SB 823. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, we will now have a few speakers from the Service Employees International Union. I'd like to introduce Terry Lawhead, and they're going to give the perspective uh, of individuals who work both at the institutions and have previously worked overseeing the institutions. Uh, so, Terry. Good morning. I'm Terry Lawhead, and I am the chair for Unit 21 from SEIU Local 1000. Um, we represent the educators and the librarians throughout California. To my right is Diane Cuchilla, who is uh, one of the members who was impacted by the closure of the private post-secondary. Her job was to ensure the protection of students who attend these schools and now we have over 400 students who are not being protected because California does not want to pass a bill. And on behalf of SEIU and the education specialists at post-secondary, we would like to thank Senator Parada for all his tireless, effortless, tiring efforts, and also Speaker Bass for her support. Um, we're really disappointed at the assembly, for, the assembly floor on the vote yesterday. We have 400 student, over 400 students that are not being protected, and it's not a matter of if this bill gets passed. This bill does need to be passed, and we are urging that the assembly pass this and vote again yes. Thank you. Hi. I'm Diana Cuchilla, former employee of the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary, and I too would like to thank Senator, Senator Prada for all of his hard work um, and uh, efforts uh, towards putting Senate Bill 823 uh, to work. Um, it is a critically needed bill for the students of California. There are actually about 400,000 students that are currently at risk, and in particular in the medical field. Um, and so we want to ensure that consumers are protected, in particular phlebotomy students who are getting instruction from uh, non-certified rather instructors and who are being put to work out in um, the medical field with no uh, correct training, no credentialed uh, instructors. And so I urge you to please vote and pass Senate Bill 823. Thank you. Our next speaker is Leilani Yi from Acre. Good morning, Leilani Aguinaldo Yee with Asian Americans for Civil Rights and Equality. Many of these, pro many of these programs are targeting um, limited English proficient recent immigrants, um, and we urge 
We urge our assembly members to vote in support of SB 823 and in so doing vote in support of the 400,000 California students who need their voices heard here in the Capitol. Otherwise, you're voting for for-profit businesses who are trying to take advantage of this very vulnerable population here in California, and we urge everyone to support SB 823. Thank you. And with that, I think that concludes our speakers. And let me just add uh, one point from the perspective of the Consumer Federation, really a, kind of a personal uh, perspective. Uh, we talk a lot about what's happened to the students in the past. There's a track record at these institutions. We talk about students that end up uh, with large debt and no promise of employment. But it also impacts those individuals who currently are looking for a better opportunity, a better tomorrow. I can tell you last night, just interestingly enough, I was riding light rail here in Sacramento, and there were two gentlemen who had just come from uh, you know, uh, job interviews. And they were talking about how difficult it was in this economy today to really get a good job, to change their lives. They were talking about taking care of their kids. They had no education and really you know, no, no certainty of what was going to happen tomorrow. And they brought up going to one of these schools as a possibility, just ironically sitting behind me, talking about it. And I couldn't, in good conscience, turn around and tell them, you know what, you should do it. Because I knew that if they decided to go to these schools, they're the only educational institutions in our state that are unregulated. And they, they could take on thousands of dollars of, of debt and end up no better off than they were last night riding the light rail with no job. That's what we're dealing with. So it is even more important in, with the state of our economy, with no options, and the economic downturn that we are struggling through, that we re-regulate these institutions and make sure that, that students have an opportunity, that individuals looking for a better tomorrow can have some comfort that the money that they are spending uh, will result in something uh, positive for them. So we, again, we urge the passage of SB 823. With that, I think any of our individuals are here to answer questions regarding the bill or any other uh, related matter. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you all for being here today.